Hello everyone, this is Joe Neville and this is the third video in my Aruba Home Lab build series. In this video we are going to build a Windows Server 2019. I'm going to make it a domain controller and a certificate authority. Without further ado, remote desktop across to my Hyper-V server. Here we go. Um, I have already downloaded the image. I'm going to use this one actually the, with the desktop. So it's Windows Server 2019. Okay, so we need to fire up the Hyper-V. Where's my Hyper-V tool? Here we are. Okay, I've already got my clear pass, so let's create a new virtual machine. I'm going to call it WinDC1. Uh, Gen 2, because it's Windows Server 2019, you can have Gen 2. Uh, okay. Going to connect it to Ethernet. Looks good. I'll give it 50 gig. Fine. Okay, install from a bootable image file, and that is this one. Okay, because that gives us the desktop. Okay, check the settings there. I am going to bump up the processors. And here on the network adapter, so this is where we can configure the per VM VLAN, and I want that to be VLAN 5. Let's apply that. I think that's it. I think we're good. Let's boot. Check the console. Down here. There we go. I just so I hit Control Alt End to allow it to boot properly. I only just found that out actually after all this time that uh, because obviously if you do a Control Alt Delete and you're on a Windows machine, it locks the the uh, host machine. But if you're looking at a VM, you just do Control Alt End and then that uh, sends the Control Alt Delete to the VM. Maybe everybody knew that this whole time and that's just me that didn't know that, but there you go. It was quite a revelation. Okay, install now. Don't have a pro, I do have a product key, but I'll put it in later. And so here are the options. I'm gonna go for standard desktop experience. So if you don't go for the desktop experience, then you have a, uh, I think it's actually, I'm not sure if it counts as server core, but essentially it, be, it boots up. It's more of a lightweight server that doesn't have the uh, GUI on it. And that means that you need to be able to run sconfig and uh, set it up via PowerShell. Really great if you're gonna have multiple servers which is great if you're gonna have multiple servers because you only really need one GUI. It, for this setup, I'm just gonna have multiple GUIs because I'm building a separate, completely separate small domain that I'm just going to use for very specific tasks and then I'll probably just blow away art when I'm finished doing what I want to do with it. So I'm going custom install, standard stuff. And in the interest of time, I'll jump ahead here while it is installing. And after a reboot, we are back with this customized settings. We've got to put the password in for the administrator. Let's log in. Okay, close this down for now. First of all, I am going to set the IP address. Okay, change adapter options. Okay, 
because this is going to be the domain controller with DNS on it and DHCP and the CA is of course as well. Uh, I want a static IP address on there. And this one is, so that's dot one actually, 24 bit mask. Four is the gateway and the, this is my lab DNS server. Just set that there. So I'm not going to go for V6 at the moment. I'm just going to set it up with V4 and then I'm going to move on to V6 at a later time. Okay, let's close this down. So I was toying with the idea of using some PowerShell because I've been, as I've been going along prepping for the video, I've been picking up some PowerShell and I, and I do feel that PowerShell is a great resource and a really good way to speed up processes, especially if you're building multiple servers. Uh, and some of the things that you can do on PowerShell are very, even just small things, really powerful um, for your basic build, which if you go through the GUI, it's a number of steps. Whereas, um, so for example, let's make this a bit bigger. I should say that in general, what I'm going to do is, if anyone's following along, I'm going to do most of it via the GUI um, because that's what most people use. But one a nice touch, I'll put in some PowerShell where I think that is really useful and speeds things up. So a really nice one is if we do rename computer, because I want to give this its the uh, actual name that I've given to the um, VM. So as a string, I'll call it win-dc-1. Into that, and that's done it. If I do a restart, so if I go restart computer, and that will go off. So if we were trying to do that via a GUI, it's about three or four clicks down into that and then another couple of clicks to come out and then a few more clicks to actually reload. Uh, I thought that was a really powerful command to get the task done quickly. Okay, let's look at the local server. There we are, WinDC1, good. There's no domain at the moment because this is going to be the domain controller. So I'm going to create the domain as I go along. Uh, remote desktop is disabled. I'm going to enable that. Yeah, fine. Because this is just lab, I'm being pretty loose with some of the security measures. I'm going to turn off the web browser security as well. Okay, so I think we are ready to go for add roles and features. Yeah, skip this by default. Role based, yes. Local, yes. And I'm going to go for this Active Directory domain services first. Add that feature in. I also want DHCP and the DNS. I believe DNS is turned on anyway when you uh, enable the domain controller, but I just ticked it to be certain. Okay. All right, we'll just go for the restart. It doesn't really matter. I can close this down now and it's just a case of, get rid of that message. It's just a case of waiting for the instance so you can see the progress there. So I will jump ahead. Okay, that looks to be done. Well, I've got this yellow triangle, which is for post-deployment configuration. Okay, I will, yeah, it's saying installation succeeded. Let's get rid of that one. So let's go for promote this server to a domain controller, and then I've got the DHCP to do. Okay, so this is brand new, like I said, a uh, kind of self-contained setup. So it's a new forest. And I'm going to call it, so it's root domain name. Ah, what should I call it? I'm going to call it red squad dot home. Sticking with the defaults with the forest functional level, all those good things, putting a password.
Next. Okay, there's no DNS server for the delegation that I'm going to use. It should pick up the NetBIOS domain name. Okay, defaults. A nice part about this actually, if you go through this for the first time and then you want to repeat it, you can just hit this and Windows makes you a script kiddie. You can just uh, reuse that again. So it, and if you were using a uh, different domain, etc., you just change the variables. So it actually gives you the script to speed this part up. I, I wanted to go through the GUI though um, to show people that are following along how to do that before jumping, if they didn't have the script. Um, next. Okay, you get these warnings, but everything's passed successfully. We hit install. There was a warning there that this will reboot automatically at the end of the install, which is fine because it's just lab. I'm not cutting myself off. Back from the reboot then. Let's log in. Onto the server manager dashboard then. Yellow triangles a go-go. Uh, okay, fine. So the domain controller is complete. And you can see over here ADDS is uh, set up. So what I need to do now is the DHCP configuration. Fine, just go commit that using the defaults. Fine, we should have DHCP. So I want to set that up. I'll do that now. And like I say, it will just be V4 for this first go through. I'll set up a new scope. Five. Okay. Nope. Six, eight. Yes. Trying to type too quickly. One hundred. Five. One, one, five. Fine. Yep. Yep. Defaults. Configure that now. Okay. Default gateway. Yes. Top of the subnet. And the DNS server is already in there. That's the local server. Fine. Yeah, win. Skip that. Activate now. Yes, please. So the DHCP will be used by the APs to boot up and grab an IP address. Okay, let's I can close that down then. If we'll check DNS. Go to properties, you can see, so we have got the local and the forwarder because I set on the IP address of the device there, the uh, DNS server, that's picked up. So my this is for my whole lab, my home uh, DNS server. That's one's been picked up automatically. So that's a, a nice little uh, time saver. I'm going to set up some new entities for testing then. So if we go to this uh, administrative center, uh, there's Red Squad there. It's good to enable the recycle bin apparently. Okay. We'll go for a new organizational unit here by right clicking uh, new org unit. And we'll just call this Red test there's red test and in there I'm going to create a new group group name call them x-wing so the ones with the red are the uh, variables that are required Let's go in there that's our group and I want to, within my org unit red test, I want a new user. So this is going to be the user that I use rather than just using the administrator all the time. So we will call this user wedge, do wedge, okay, password. Confirm the password. Check for max distance of fine, yeah. And let's go, okay, that. To group, 
I'm gonna add wedge to X check names. Yeah, okay, and then the X one group I will add let's go member of and I will add uh I want to be a member of domain uh admins give wedge a decent level of privileges let's uh, minimize that then and i will go to adding in a new feature so we've still got to do the ca so roles and features yeah okay next and so it's the adcs certificate services let's turn that on next 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 and I want the web enrollment as well, which will turn on the web server. So that's fine. Okay. Restart if required. I don't think a restart is required, but I'll hit that anyway. Okay, this is some nonsense I'm not interested in. Start the installation. Right, yellow triangle. So let's see. Configure the certificate services. So this is where we set up the CA essentially. Um, I will change that. I want to change to. Uh, let's go for wedge. Now we set. I think that should be okay for this. If you're setting up multiple servers, which I have with others, it, at this stage, if you're still in as the administrator on one server, it will actually stop you setting up services on a remote server because you need to be an enterprise admin or a domain admin, I think. So it's always good to jump off of the administrator uh, account and use an actual domain-wide, enterprise-wide account. So that's what... I'm going to try to do here. Ah, I've hit a problem. I need to change Wedge's setup. Let's have a look at his properties. Yeah, part user must change. So, uh, okay, I don't want to go for that. I will go for password never expires. Okay, so because I just want a single password that I can use for the users that I set up so that hopefully that's going to be fine now let's get rid of that here we are right try again good right let's go ahead CA And we're setting up an enterprise CA. And this is a root CA. Now, this is, I'm setting up a single CA because this is just in a lab. If you wanted to make this more realistic for your lab setup to emulate what is the advised setup for a real world deployment, you would have a root CA to issue the top of the chain so you would use a root CA and then you would set up a subordinate CA. You issue the top level cert off of the root CA and then you turn that off and you use the subordinate CA for your day to day work. I might do that in a uh, future video, but for now, everything's just going to be on a single uh, setup. So a domain controller and root CA, that's fine for now. Go ahead. So what we're doing, create the new private key. Fine, I'm just gonna stick with the defaults for all of this. Okay, defaults, defaults, yes, yeah, fine. Uh, good, hit that configure button. Green ticks, I like it. And web enrollment as well. So now we can open up, there you go, CA. Hopefully, yeah, right. So that's set up, ready to go, I hope. It's taken about an hour 
um, to set that server up with the, and I haven't done one of the most important steps because I wanted to progress the video, which is Windows Update. I'll fire off Windows Update after I finish this video. That's as far as I want to take it with this video then. So I set up a domain controller and a CA. I need to run the updates on that and I need to activate it. In the next video, I'll be setting up the basics of ClearPass. So the ClearPass VM that I've already set up, I will be getting the root certificate off of the CA, importing that into ClearPass. So please join me for that one. Please do leave a like, comment, subscribe, and also subscribe to the Airheads Broadcasting Channel, where there's a whole wealth, it's a, there's a treasure trove of uh, Aruba videos and other areas of networking. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. My name is Joe Neville and goodbye.